Under the sea. Under the sea. Hey, here's one way to play Little Mermaid. Looks like another big day in America. Wintertime in Michigan. Beautiful. Now we're setting a scene for a movie with matchbox cars and chalk. Real high tech. people like yourself that I've been extremely emotionally involved with now for some time and um, may I continue. God bless you. Amazing the staff it takes to shoot just one scene of a movie.
<laughs> Where can I, can I hang, get, keep this with you, or? The actor and the stunt double make their way up the bridge. What's the situation at the moment there? get this finished on I hope so but I think it's gonna be you know working seven days a week uh, I mean we're already doing 15 and a half 16 uh, days John I mean you know but uh, now is the boy up there doing well he's doing all right he's showing out well he's all right you know he's okay uh, he appears to always creating see while he's creating you know he's fine I'm not even creating, create artistically what I mean is creating, not, not you know. <laughs> Getting the track ready for the cameras. How to start a fire, a show. A show we were working on for uh, for survival. Got an assortment of uh, great pine needles, and, uh, anything combustible, a bit of bark, and, uh, bark, anything that can make a, a fire. All right, really simple stuff. You have to get as dry as you, as you possibly can, though. Now this stuff, this is off the uh, silver birch tree and it's, it's, uh, it burns even when it's wet, so keep that in mind, that's really good. Wake up! We're going to use this as a fire start. Not sure this show okay. would uh, make it, but... I've got some here to pull off the tree, and uh, once you get that going, it burns even when it's wet. So if you see any of this stuff around, make sure you get hold of that. Okay, I've... Uh, Got a stick that I'm going to be using to um, use as a base for the friction. We make a V in it like this. And the reason for that is it allows the airflow and the ash as you're uh, producing friction, causing heat. Heat will start to cause little embers to appear. Okay, you can blow them off into your uh, little pile that you'll have ready for, for the fire and uh, this is how we do it so we do a little groove like this a little V like this whittle this out I've got one I've already done and this is it here okay grooved it out and I've got that so that's gonna lay down like this then we're going to need a stick and uh, what we do with the stick is we make sure these are absolutely dry as dry as possible we shave the ends off bring it down to a nice point now what i also like to do because i'm going to be using a bow type instrument fashion out of wood and uh, a stick i cut a groove in it like this okay 
And the idea behind this is uh, I found some paracord or cord or a shoelace. You can use your shoelace. Whatever you find, you have to adapt. So what you do is place that on the bottom and the lace would go there. I'll have to find something later. And my bow, okay, it's just a stick shape like that. And it will turn like this, okay, causing friction. Now this is a bit unstable, so I'm gonna have to stabilize this, either put my knee in it or my foot, and I can rotate this back and forth like this, okay? Hopefully, we'll get a fire going, or at least get the embers. The embers will be transferred to my little fire pack, and we'll see if we can get a fire going. So that's how it works, okay? Simple as that. Let me show you what I mean about this stuff. It's on a, it's bark of a silver birch. Um, again, it's, it's very, very fra flammable even when it's wet. So let's have a look at that stuff. You can find it on, if you're walking on the woods, just keep your eyes open for it. Okay, here's what we're looking for. Let's see how it comes off, strips. You really don't need a lot of it, but it's dead so you're not angry. This stuff is really good. It should ignite pretty quick. And like I said, it, it actually burns when it's wet. This is one of the only fuels that I know of that can do that. So we had a sponsor and everything set up, but once we took a look at it, we said, nah, I don't think so. So I'll keep watching and, and you'll see why. And um, I've got the components here together. Make it easy and here. Basically, uh, we need a source for the, for the fire. Okay, lint is very, very good. You can get this out of your dryer at home from your laundry. Okay, just get a little bit of that stuff. It burns really good. Um, if you can't get that off your clothes, okay, and your socks, you scrape. You add that to the mix. Okay. Any of your clothes, you get fuzz off it, so we, we would use that. Um, depending on where we are, but for example, where we are right now, that I have access to uh, silver birch. Silver birch. Bark is really incredible stuff. It's one of the only fuels that I know of would burn when it, even when it's wet. So try and get some of that stuff, okay? And what we do is cut it really fine, as fine as possible. Okay, and we would add that to it. Pine needles are good too, okay? Break them up. Okay. Mix that up. That should be sufficient to start the fire going. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is use this, my little bow, there's my little bow, there's my little bow, and I'm going to use a, a shoelace or, or a paracord, I think I'll use paracord, it's easier, I don't want to take my shoes off, frighten you all the way, so we can use some paracord, or 550 cords, also known as, or a little bit, bit of nylon. Okay. What I like to do also is notch the ends of my little bow that I'm going to make because uh, I don't want it coming off. Pull it tight. Tie it off. On the other groove, on the other side, like this. What I do is I make my V, okay, so the embers will fall through that onto my pile. Okay, it also allows air to supply to the uh, friction, so we can try to generate some heat pretty quick. Get my little pile here, I'm gonna put it on this. 
this old piece of wood here I'm going to use to uh, use as a pad. Okay, once I've got that, I've got my, my piece that I've already trimmed on the edge and I've cut my little groove in and the groove will fit, he says, like this. So it's going to roll back and forth like this, okay? So I need to make that. And I try to make it as near the bottom as I can. If it's up here, it's going to be sloppy. Try to make it as near the friction point as possible. Like this. A piece of wood on the top. You get your fire going. Um, keep some of your starter stuff that you use, okay? Like the, this stuff, just in case you might come to an area where there is none. But I tell you, it's hard. It, it might look easy, but it's not, okay? It's really hard to do the spindle. Uh, really, really hard. I prefer to use the old fashioned way get a lighter or a match. But anyway, it is possible, okay? You're gonna burn a lot of calories, so you're gonna probably make sure you're eating well, plenty of protein and carbohydrates. and some across food take as much as you can as much as you can carry berries if you're not familiar with them don't eat them some of them are poisonous Quite a hike. As you can see those uh, marshes are pretty deep, and it's all miles and miles. It's uh, not fun, I can tell you that right now. You gotta do these things sometimes to get from A to B. So. As long as you fit, you can do it. Do it, but be very, very careful in marsh. Okay. You can spend hours, days walking around in, in circles. You've got a compass, or you at least know where the cardinal points are north, south, east, and west. And, uh, choose a direction and go for it. All right, on to the next. Oh, well, we had fun.
Hello and welcome to the beautiful island of Grand Cayman. We're here today on the north side of the island at Cayman Kai and we're going to be taking a tour through a beautiful home here called Bali High Kai. Um, just a bit about the island, this is a wonderful Caribbean island. Um, main attractions here include diving, snorkeling, fishing. Um, it's also a tax-free island, so there's much banking that goes on here. It's one of the things that the island is well known for. Um, before we talk any further about the island, I'd like to introduce our hosts today, John and Philippa Stewart. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Philippa Stewart. Hello. Hello. Now, you're both from Britain. What caused you to move to Grand Cayman? Uh, the main reason that we moved to the Grand Cayman uh, really was because of tax, uh, tax advantages that you've got here. Uh, you've no taxes at all to pay. Um, all taxes that you have are indirect. And also, it's such a beautiful place. There's no other ta uh, tax haven in the world as good as Grand Kim or as nice. And Philippa, I know one of the things that's been attractive is the remote area here at Cayman Kai. It's about 45 minutes from Georgetown, um, where you have a lot of conveniences, right? And oh yes, so we, we have all, all um, the necessary shopping that we could possibly think of here. Um, but being as far out as we are, it isn't far, really, because we have very little traffic here. Um, but it's, it's a lovely place to live. It's quite private here, isn't it? Very private, yes. But you are close to the amenities. Oh, we're close enough. If you were any closer, it would become on top of you. One of the attractions for divers in this area is that there are a couple of different dive operations very close by, aren't there? Oh, yes, there are. There's one at Rum Point, and then there's one at Cayman Kai which is literally, oh, both of them are about five minutes in a car, ten minutes walking. And if you're a snorkeler, isn't there wonderful snorkeling just out oh, back here in the beautiful. Sea? You can just swim out to the reef and you've got all the beautiful fish and wildlife out there. Well, in terms of the house itself then, John, how many total square feet does the house have? Uh, the house has 4,500 uh, square feet, which includes, that includes the cabana, which is uh, around by the pool, uh, the main house, uh, the garage, and the bungalow, which is in its own separate ground. So really there are three separate living areas, the main house, the cabana, in the bungalow. That is correct, yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of the pool area, there's a, a lovely pool area back behind the house. Um, tell me about that pool. The pool is uh, approximately 60 foot long, um, 3 foot 
at the shallow end, uh, seven foot at the deep end. Um, the, there's plenty of area around the pool for uh, lounging chairs or de uh, their lounging chairs um, and sitting area. And there is also a dining area um, which can be used outside that. Now, Philip, I noticed that it's very beautifully landscaped around the pool. What kinds of flowers are those brightly colored, beautiful flowers? Oh, well, that's Bougainvillea, which, of course, you can get all over the world, but uh, it really thrives here. And um, we, we have many different colors, and I pick them and have them in the house all the time. And they just, they go on and on and on. Yeah, they're just beautiful. Yeah. They must be nice as centerpieces. Oh yes, they're very pretty. Now we've talked a bit about the pool area. John, can you tell me a bit more about the cabana? Yeah, the cabana uh, overlooks the uh, swimming pool. It has uh, a large sitting area, and the one of the the seats can be pulled out, and it can be made into a double bed. We also, it also has a ceiling fan, fully air conditioned, and its own fridge, and a bar, uh, which is very useful if you're having parties, because uh, you can lay the bar up uh, as a bar, and the um, floor's tiled, and if people spill on the floor, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's got its own bathroom, en suite. It must be very convenient having a separate area like that if you're entertaining people or you have guests coming over that can stay there. Now you also have another separate living area that would be the bungalow, is that correct? Yeah, the bungalow is uh, another completely separate area, uh, completely uh, void of the house. It is um, set in its own grounds. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it is fully air conditioned. This is a wonderful location. Oh, it is. Really yes. fantastic. 